Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at some of the more complex multi-step questions um, and just figuring out yeah, different ways of trying to answer them and how to best approach them. So just in terms of kind of like an overview. So the first thing that's really important is I think with these multi-step questions, they can seem daunting because there are many steps um, and it feels like they overload you with way too much information. However, one of the most important things to understand is that often the steps are fairly logical, but it, you just need a second to process this information. OK, so um, the first thing that I would say is it's important to follow the maths, follow slash information. So what I mean by that is if they give you certain values and units, etc., etc., they're probably going to be useful. OK, so instead of looking at all the table, all the tables and all the data in the graph, etc., etc., look at the important things in the questions and see if you can somehow relate these between each other. OK, the next thing that's important and is probably probably more of a key idea is to skip them. Right. So once again, if you guys are new to the channel here, and I'd really recommend you to go and watch my QR walkthrough videos and where you can see in my first run through of QR out of the 36 questions, I may only answer about 16 to 18 of them. OK. And the reason for that is because I do believe that they're not a necessity. Right. There are some questions. Every single question in QR is worth exactly the same. Remember, it's not necessarily about trying to get 100 percent in QR. It's about trying to get as much as you can. And especially on your first run through, you should be trying to secure those easy marks instead of wasting time being bogged down by those harder questions. So if you ever see a multi step question, which normally you can tell just because it's quite long, or there's a lot of information going on with it. And um, it's very, very easy to be able to kind of just skip them um, and just move on. Right. So you don't even have to try to process it. Just move on on to the first question. OK, so let's have a look at um, some of the examples here then. So let's have a look at the first one. So what's the total distance Jennifer will run and walk on her Tuesday training day? So you've got two ideas here. OK, so she runs 12 minutes at 10 kilometers per hour, walks for 10 minutes at 6 kilometers per hour and repeats twice. OK, so this one, there's kind of two ideas here. So once again, let's have a look at the running. So it's 12 minutes at 10 kilometers per hour. So if you guys haven't watched my speed, distance time video, I would really recommend you to go back and watch that, because one of the things I mentioned in there was about learning the importance of the subdivisions OK, of the hour. So five minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 30, etc. And learning what they are. So 12 minutes is um, a fifth. So 0 0.2 minutes, uh, sorry, 0 0.2 hours times 10 kilometers per hour is going to be two kilometers um, and then walking for 10 minutes a six so 10 minutes is sixth times six so six hours times six kilometers per hour is simply going to be one kilometer but add these two together get three kilometers however it says you repeat this twice so it turns out by two so you get six kilometers so a little bit nicer of a multi-step question but nonetheless, follow the information, run and walk on her Tuesday training day. OK, great. So on to the next question, then. Paddy drives at an average speed of 70 miles an hour on the motorway and an average speed of 20 miles an hour on other roads. He drives exactly half the distance of his total journey on the motorway. Approximately what is his average speed for the total journey in miles per hour? This is quite a devious question. Um, it's devious because you kind of have to work with unknown values here. Unfortunately, that's the kind of um, difficulty behind this. Um, and so therefore, it is a very, it is quite a challenging question. Um, but it's kind of like multi-step because you have to do, there's a couple of things you have to do in order to be able to get to that final answer. OK, um, so in terms of what it says, it says that exactly half the distance is driven on the motorway. So the other half is therefore going to be driven on the other roads. So we don't actually know um, what the time spent is. So the, the idea is basically in order to so remember, speed is distance over time. We are trying to find speed. So we need to know the overall distance divided by the overall time. OK, so what we have to do is because we don't know anything about the distance at all, we kind of have to use fake values as such. So we're going to say that he spends X amount of time on the motorway and then sorry, X distance of time on the motorway and X distance of time on the other roads. OK, so if he's driving at an average speed of 70 miles per hour and he's going, so the time on the motorway will therefore be. So time is distance divided by speed, X divided by uh, 70. OK, and the time here is therefore going to be X divided by 20. OK, um, so in total, if we add it up together, he spends X over 70 plus X over 20, which is if you put it both under 140, it's just going to be uh, 2X plus 7X, which is 9X over 140. OK, so that's the total time taken. OK, so 
we've got the time now. Do we have the distance? Remember, we said it was 2x. So the distance is going to be 2x divided by 9x over 140. So the x's are going to cancel here. But then because this 140 is like on the bottom, it flips to the top of the fraction, actually. So it becomes 140 times 2, which is 280 divided by 9. So you get 31.1 recurring um, in terms of miles per hour, because this should be because um, everything that we worked out here was in uh, MPH. So, yeah, the overall average speed for his total journey in miles per hour is therefore going to be 31.1 miles per hour. And I appreciate that this is a multi-step slash complex question, but once again, it's this kind of new idea of introducing algebra in here. Okay, And I know I'm, I haven't done an algebra video specifically yet, but it will, it will be one of the ones that I drop um, very, very um, near in the future. Okay. Okay, so this is utilizing geometry, which I dropped a video on recently. So Michelle cuts an eight by eight centimeter rect re right angle triangle from the rectangle section of piece D. What percentage of the original whole piece D is now left? Okay, so eight by eight. So basically you have to work out this and you can see that D is going to be essentially a um, semicircle stuck onto the end of um, some kind of um, square square rectangle as such okay so you can see here therefore this bit must be four centimeters so you can do this bit in your head which is going to be 80 centimeters the area of this is going to be a half times pi times r squared so that's going to be a half times 16 times 3.14 which gives you 25.12 centimeters squared and this was 80 centimeters squared so 8 by 8, right angle, triangle. What percentage is now left? So 8 by 8, 8 by 8, right angle, triangle. The area of this is therefore going to be 8 by 8 divided by 2, which is 32 centimeters squared. So 80 plus 25.12 minus 32, which is 73.12 centimeters squared is left over the total of 80 plus 25.12, which is 105.12 centimeters squared times by 100. So 73.12 divided by 105.12, which is 69.558 dot 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 dot. So that's going to be 69.6% left over. Okay. Um, once again, not too bad of a question, just divide it into its constituent parts. Um, and, you know, this idea of following the information is really crucial here. So if you cut this section out of this rectangle section of piece D, um, remember, we have piece D first of all, so you probably have to find the area of that. So I went and did that. You're gonna have to find the area of this. So I went and did that. You just take it away. Like the maths makes sense. So I know here the the steps do seem a lot easier. Okay, and on to the very last question then. So if you guys want to have a go at this question, this is quite a challenging question. This is question four from a set from the official UCAT question bank. Um so take a pause, see if you can answer it, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Okay, so what makes this question so hard is because it feels like there's no apparent way to answer it. So how many litres of water are needed to make 3.5 metres cubed of watertight concrete? So you look at the litres of water, it says 7.7 .7 litres of water for every 25 kg of cement. But then we're given a volume of concrete. We're not given massive cement. So then people would just start panicking and they realise oh, they don't know what to do. So the first thing I want to say is I would definitely skip this question. Remember, if you try a question, you don't know what to do immediately, it's not worth doing it right now, right? So you, the questions you want to be able to do faster are the ones that you basically don't have to think about, the ones you know how to do, you know, the easy percentage change questions, for example, and come back to this at the end. The point with this is that sometimes you have to work backwards. So remember, you have to try and work out litres of water, okay? And in order to work out litres of water, you need to know mass of cement, because you're told it's 7 litres of water for every 25 kg of cement. How do you work out mass of cement? Well, it tells you the density here. It's 2240 kilograms per meter cube. So you're going to have to know the volume of cement. Okay. How can you figure out the volume of cement? If you look around a little bit, it says the table gives information about the ratios by volume of material used to make types of concrete mix. So how do you figure out the volume of cement? We're going to use the volume of concrete. And you can see that leads us to our starting step. So the problem is often students often try and go from here onwards, but it's better to work backwards because that means there's less finite possibilities. Because if you work forward from volume of concrete, you can do anything with the volume of concrete, right? So let's talk through this answer. So 3.5 meters cubed of watertight concrete. We want the volume of cement, and this is watertight. So you can see the volume of cement is going to be two parts, 
to three to six. So in total, there's 11 parts and cement is two of those 11 parts in regards to the volume. So we times by two over 11, which gives us seven over 11 meters cubed of cement. Then to convert it into a mass of cement, you can see this is the mass per meter cubed. So then times this by 2240. So seven divided by 11 times 2240, which gives you 14, 25.4545 recurring kilograms of cement. Okay, so then from mass of cement, got to go to liters of water. Remember what, what we figured out here. For every 25 kg of cement, you have 7 liters. So you've got to figure out how many lots of 25 you have. So you divide by 25, which gives you 57.01. And for every lot of 25, you have 7 liters of water. So then you just multiply that by 7. So you have... You get your final answer as 399.1 litres, so your answer is going to be C, right? 399 litres of water, okay? So, um, yeah, how many litres of water are needed to make 3.5 metre cubes of water watertight concrete? The answer is C, 399. So I appreciate this is a difficult question, but I don't necessarily think it's, you know, un like un undoable, basically. Um, it is definitely solvable, um, just requires you to sometimes work backwards. And that was the point I wanted to um, kind of show you here with this multi-step question. So often multi-step questions, I know not all of them we work backwards, but sometimes um, that's the best way to kind of go about doing things. Okay, hope that makes sense. Great. So in that case, then, um, I hope this video um, was helpful, just taking you through some multi-step questions. In terms of videos that I have planned for the future, um, the uh, QR video on percentages will be coming out very soon, um, as well as ratios as well, like ratios and proportions. And I will also release a full walkthrough um, when we hit 2,000 subscribers. So um, please do keep um, your eyes peeled for that. So just in the process of editing and recording that. Okay. So um, thank you as always for all of the support, guys, and I will see you